So Adobe released a new update for the beta version of After Effects and now we can add GLB and GLTF files with embedded animation to the timeline. There's a new animation options menu where you can select and include the animation to playback as well as retime these animation sequences like regular footage layers. At the time of this recording, this is only available in the beta version. So visit the beta apps tab of your Creative Cloud desktop app and select install next to the After Effects beta icon. Okay, so I had the time to play with it for a few days and I think I'm ready to share some of my examples and show you what's currently possible. If you're following this channel, this composition may look familiar to you because I've used it in one of my previous tutorials to demonstrate four ways of working with animated 3D models using plugins. It's all still relevant, and if you want, you can check it out using the link down below. But for now, we're going to use it natively without any third-party tools. So the model that I'll use is this mech drone by Willy the Carpentier, and as always, Links for all the models are in the description, so you can download them and follow along with me. Okay, so inside After Effects, I'll return to the beginning and I'll double click in the project panel and bring this mechdrone.glb and this file has an embedded animation inside of it. I'll drag and drop it on top of the comp here in the project panel, which is going to place it in the middle of the comp after showing me that I must agree to change to the advanced 3D renderer. So I'll say OK, and if I want, I can now scale the object. So let's just scale it a touch, maybe to 200%, maybe even more. And then I'll click OK. I'll pull it down. And as we can see right now, I'm just going to close the environment light and move my timeline. The only motion that we have here is from the camera that I already animated ahead of time but the model is not animating. To make it animate, we need to twirl open its properties. And now under the animation options, we have a pop-up menu with all the embedded animations. So in this case, I only have a single take and you can see that this take is 150 frames. So I'll select it. And this means that for the entire duration now, we'll have this model animated. Now we can still control this model the same way we did before. So let's go to the beginning and I'll hover on top of the Z rotation or orientation, I should say. I'm just going to change it so the robot is going to look at us. And now if I'll preview the animation, you can see that it is working. We have those flipping things here and the robot is moving his hands. Now, it's a little bit difficult to actually judge what's happening here. So if you want, we can actually control the timing of it. And to do it, we can select the layer and then we can go to the layer menu and under time, I'll enable time remapping. And this is going to put two keyframes at the beginning and at the end frame. So in my case, they are exactly synced with the robot animation but sometimes it won't be the case. I'll show you another example in a moment. So I'm just going to take the last keyframe and I'm just going to move it over here to around 30. And this means that the entire animation now is going to happen much quicker. But again, from this point onward, it's just going to freeze in place. So what we can do is option click on the stopwatch and this is going to show us the expression options. And I'm just going to type in loop after Effects will help me. I'm after the loop out expression. So I'm just going to select it and then press return to accept this expression. Now it's important to mention that when you use time remapping on these 3D objects, the interpolation you get, even with extreme slow motion situations is smooth and clean. And this means that if I'll play from this point, the animation is going to loop over and over again. And if you have a seamless animation, then you are set to go. All we need to do right now is maybe drag this robot underneath my adjustment layers and then I'll enable real smart motion blur to add some motion blur to the scene as well as some glow and noise. And the reason that we are not seeing it is because right now I'm using the draft 3D mode. So I'll uncheck it and then I'll go to the beginning, I'll maximize the frame and I'll preview the animation for you. So if this is all you need to do, bring a 3D model with embedded animation, there you have it. You can retime it and then you are ready to go. 
But let's say that you want to integrate it with some video files or maybe add other stuff which are not supported yet. So let me show you a few more examples. So this comp is based on a free Adobe stock clip of downtown Naples above Piazza del Plebiscito. And I've used the camera tracker to solve the 3D camera animation and then created two nulls on top of the rooftop so I can use the 3D coordinates and place some 3D models, animated one, in the desired place. Then I've imported the Dr. Octopus model from Spider-Man No Way Home. And again, this free model is courtesy of Spiderware, and he has many other Spider-Man based characters to offer, so make sure to check the links in this page. Anyway, back to After Effects, I've placed this model and shift parent it to the red null and then scale it to be in the correct size. Now, this model has dozens of embedded animation sequences. Some of them are quite articulated and also include the vulture character. So I urge you to check them out. But at the end, I decided to go with this one. So I time remapped it to the relevant part of the animation and then looped the keyframes using the loop out expression. Now it doesn't loop seamlessly, but I knew that I'll crop this 4K composition to HD and then add my own camera move. So I left it like this. To make the story more interesting, I added a running Spider-Man model by nitwip.friends. And this model also comes with few embedded animations. So I selected the relevant track, in this case the run, and made it loop the same way using the time remapping keyframes and the loop out expression. Then I've animated the position so it looks like Spidey is rushing towards Doc Ock. And finally, to add the shadows, I've created a solid, or actually a couple of solids layer, as you can see here, with the calculations effect and the CC slant and some blur because those 3D models always comes too sharp. Now, while covering the technique in greater detail in this tutorial, just in case you want to learn more. So I took this 4K comp and placed it inside an HD comp, and now I have the freedom to move and scale it to create a hectic handheld camera motion. I've added some hysterical sound effects, and this is how it looks. Okay, moving on to another example. Oh, wait a minute, time out. Midst recording this tutorial, an update for After Effects just dropped. I couldn't resist myself and after updating, I saw that we now have a new user interface theme based on the Adobe's Spectrum design. So things are going to look a little different, but no buttons or features or menus have changed their positions. You now have three new themes to choose from. Darkest, Dark and Light. Oh my God. Hmm, I think I'm going to stick with the dark one, as to me, it looks the best. Okay, so this was a minor diversion, and now back to the third example. This is Terence, your everyday triceratops, which for me is a very difficult word to pronounce. So I named this guy after one of my favorite villains actor of all time. So this is Planet Houston. A very strange surface. Now you can download this model from the link down below and do it after you credit Daily Art. So thank you so much, Daily. Again, I'm borrowing this comp that appeared in one of my previous tutorials. This one is about the OCIO ACES workflow in After Effects. Check it out, it's really cool. So instead of Axel the elephant, I've placed Terence the Triceratops <laughs> enabled the animation track for him and used an environment light to try and match the lighting conditions. Now you can achieve that by playing with the X and Y rotation. I then placed an orange point light near the dinosaur legs to create the orange spill from the big 3D text in front of him. And finally, I'm using a couple of 2D layers, again with the calculation effect, 
accompanied with the Reflection and Shadow plugins from Red Giant VFX Suite. And this is just to help us to cast shadows and reflection on the floor. Currently, and unfortunately, we can't use shadow catcher layers or reflections with the advanced 3D renderer. I'll tell you more about it towards the end. So in this case, I needed to work around this problem using other tools. And this is how this looks. I think it came out quite nice, if I can say so myself. The last example is probably the most ambitious of them all. The ingredients are an 8K HDR image from Polyhaven, a Spanish castle model by Global Digital Heritage, and the star of the show, an animated fire dragon by... Anyhow, I've placed all of them inside this composition, added the HDR image as a source for the Trapcoat Horizon effect. Now you can also create a similar look using the built-in CC environment, but I think that Horizon is going to give you better result and with much more options. Then I drag the castle into the comp and then place the dragon on top of one of its helipad platforms. Next, I've enabled the embedded animation track for it, and I animated the camera using two orbit nulls to create this drone-like animation path coming from behind the castle and orbiting around the creature. Then I've played as usual with the X and Y position of the environment light, and also animated the X value so we can see the shadows underneath the dragon. And then of course, I rendered this composition and use the render file as a base for my main comp. Here, I've duplicated the render and applied the depth scanner effect, again, a third party tool, to the lower copy, and this can create a blur map so I can recreate a depth of field effect. And to do it, I'm applying the camera lens blur effect to the upper copy and playing with the values. Above those two layers, I also added two adjustment layers, one with the real smart motion blur effect and another one with the renoiser plugin from Magic Bullet. And as a final touch, I also added this fire clip from Adobe Stock and placed it inside the dragon's mouth. So, of course, he can fulfill his wish or his part and spit some fire. There's also a shape layer here that I've placed below to cast some colors from the fire on the floor. So let's see how this looks. Now, again, I must stress that this is still in beta and it may look and behave differently by the time that it will ship. Also, this is work in progress, so it's not perfect and it cannot compete with dedicated 3D applications like Blender, Cinema 4D, or even plugins like Element or Helium. I hope that Adobe will add reflections and shadow casting layers soon, as well as ambient occlusion, depth of field, and maybe the most important thing, make it run faster. So render a little bit quicker. So obviously there is room for improvement here, but I'm so glad to see those new features being added on a regular basis to After Effects. And this is what I love about the program. It is still evolving and improving. And the fact that we now have this built-in feature inside the app is really amazing. And I can't wait to see what's coming up next. Do you agree? If not, have your say here down below in the comments and let's have some discussion and try to see how we can make it better. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and thank you again for this like and the subscribe. You made my day. Take care and goodbye.